Welcome to my next video about my series how to program the WISNET W7500 chip. So in my first video we have created a very small Hello World project and in my last video we have automated the build of it with a make file. So I can show you it right here. So if I run make, all my source files will be built automatically and the result is the hello.binary file and the hello.elf file. When we take a look at the source code, we see it's extremely simple. It's basically just a variable of an unsigned 32 bit variable which is incremented in an endless loop. And today, we actually, or I want to show you how you can apply this project on the Surf 5 microcontroller by using an SWD programmer. So let's go. The first thing I will need is I will use PyOCD to um, control my debugger and to load the program on this controller here. So let's install PyOCD. The first thing I will do is I will create a new virtual environment here with Python. And I will call this environment PyOCD and I will put it here in my programming folder. Okay, so this is done. If I take a look in this PyOCD folder, I can see its structure and under bin I have a file called activate and if I source this file okay now you can see I have sourced this virtual environment the next step I have to do is I have to install PyOCD with pip. And you can see everything gets installed. And now I have it installed. Okay, and I should maybe upgrade pip to a newer version sometime, but for now it's okay. And if I want to use PyOCD without root writes, so running it without sudo, for example. One important thing I have to do is I have to add a udef rule for my stlink programmer here. So when I take a look at my USB devices, I can find my stlink version 2 um, programmer here and I see its vendor and its device ID. And I've already created a udef rule in etc udef rules d 99 stlink rule. And here you can see the rule. So this rule applies to the subsystem USB, to the device with the ID vendor 0483, which used to be the vendor ID of my stlink programmer, and the ID product 3748, which is exactly the ID here of my debugger. So I'm setting the mode of this device to 666, so any user can read and write to this device. And I also add this or I gave everyone who is in the group wheel access rights to this device and I'm happen to be in this wheel group here. Okay, so now I can access the debugger or yeah, I can access the debugger without root rights, which, which is already nice. So I can start um, accessing the device. So I will, I will start a Python script which is the PyOCD Python script. And maybe let's start by flashing the program on the microcontroller. So if I'm just running this program here, you can see basically the help tool. And you can see here we have a load command to program an image into a target device. So let's use this load command. With the minus T, I'm specifying the target controller, which is the W7500 in my case. And then I have to navigate to my elf file, which I can find in wisnet example 01 hello.elf. And now you can see the program is loaded on the microcontroller and now the program is started on the microcontroller. So how can I debug this program? Well, therefore I need the a GDP server. I need to start a GDP server and hey, that's just the second command here. So let's give it the GDP server variant. Our target is still a W7500. 
And now we can see a GDB server was started and we can connect to it from a semi-host server starting on port 4444 or over a GDB server on port 3333, which I will use here. So let me navigate once again into my WISNet examples and into my hello projects folder. So here I have the elf file and what I will do now is I will start the arm non erbgdb debugger and I want to use the hello.elf file. In this hello.elf file we also have debug symbols and this will allow um, the debugger to, um, to generate or to link the assembler instructions it sees in the program counter with the C instructions we have written here in our make file. So I've started the GDB server and the first thing I have to do is I have to connect to my GDB server. This I can do with target remote and here I have to specify the um, IP address and part. So here I'm using the local host when, when I don't have anything and I'm using the 3333 port here. And you can see I'm connected, it attached and you can see my current or the program counter is currently at the instruction where it should increment the i variable. If I'm typing an l or list here I can see five, um, five lines in um, before my current program counter and five lines below my current program counter. And now if I want to execute this command I have to type n or next and then the command will be executed and you can see now we are back at this y1 loop. If I want to see the value of my um, of the i variable, I can use print and then I have to specify the variable so you can see currently the i variable is set to 1. Okay, so let's step some more steps forward. And if I'm just pressing enter here again, it will automatically execute the last command, which is next in this case. And I'm back here at this while loop. And if I print out the value from i, we can see um, it was increased by one. Another maybe interesting thing, if you want to print out the variable in a hexadecimal format, we can use this slash x notation here. And then we will get a hex value. And if we want to start the whole program um, from the start again, we can use the load instruction to load the source code again. Then with break, we can set a breakpoint at the main function. Mm -hmm. And now we can type C or continue to start our program again. Now we're at the start of the main function and this is the first instruction. This means writing a zero into the i variable. Let's do this. And now if I print i, the value here is zero. So let's step over the plus instruction here. And now I can see the variable is set to one. And if I type c for continue again, the program is now running and i is getting incremented. And if I stop the program again and print out i, we can see we have a bigger value in it again. Okay, cool. So that's how to load software to our W7500 with, with a stealing programmer and also how to debug it by using the PyOCD GDB server and the ARM GDB. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash So thanks for watching and goodbye.